I'm a child of the King. Yes, I am. I know I am. I belong to the Lord. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm a child of the King. Yes, I am. They tried to change the Bible to fit their modern way. I keep holding on to Jesus in a good old-fashioned way. I'm on my way to heaven, for heaven is my goal. Gotta keep myself clean, my body and my soul. Cause I'm a child of the King. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm a child of the King. Yes, I am, I know I am. I belong to the Lord. Yes, I do, yes, I do. I'm a child of the King, yes, I am. Back, we'll come help us sing a little bit. Because I'm happy, and I see, I see. 
Turn shame into glory. 
Good morning. I'm going to try not to preach all day. But I want to preach. I was around about eight or nine different preachers yesterday it seemed like they were all having the same problems same issues it ain't easy just being a christian ain't easy but it is without repentance there ain't a better life than serving god amen if you got your Bibles, turn to John chapter 6, but I want to read a verse to you. The Lord bless what we're doing today and help us. And I want to cover a little. Go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 4 too. Go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 4. You can put your finger at John 6. It's easy to find. Luke 
Wednesday night, here's what happened Wednesday night. If there was any confusion, about 6.30, the fog fell so thick that I literally thought I had went under the underpass out here and I wasn't even to it yet. And when we got here, about 50 of us was here already and I told Jim to send out a message and tell everybody else to go back home if he wasn't here. That's what happened. We did have some church, though. We talked Wednesday night about salvation and got into Romans chapter number 10. How many of you know that chapter about being saved? There's a verse there in that chapter I didn't get to, two verses. It says, how can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach lest they be sent? And I've had preaching on my mind and preachers all week. Uh, America's pulpits are full of apostates, are full of money hungry men and women. But there's some good preachers out there. And if there's one thing we need, it's preaching. If there's one thing I need, it's preaching. Amen. I want you to listen to this scripture in Luke chapter number 4. Lord, help us this morning. I'm not going to stay all day right here, but we probably could if we wanted to. Who's the greatest preacher of all time? Somebody tell me. Jesus. Amen. Jesus quotes this scripture right here. Luke 4.18. Out of the book of Isaiah, he's standing in the temple. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Well, he couldn't have done it without that, could he? Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. Number one, the first thing that Jesus said, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He said he's anointed me and he's anointed me to do one thing, and that is preach the gospel to the poor. And I want to tell you something this morning about preaching. It'll show you where you stand, where your status is. Amen. Uh, everybody's got a, we're, we're either first class, second class, or lower class. No, that ain't what I'm talking about. I think about the Titanic. I'm just, I believe I might just preach a little while. Think about the Titanic. Uh, Denise, they had the upper class. They had the middle class. And then they had the lower class. And when that boat started to sink, Lord help me this morning. When that boat started to sink, they first class women and children. Then when they got in the lifeboat, second class women and children. And then whatever was left, third class women and children. And a lot of those first class men jumped on and tried to hide because they couldn't let it go. Amen. But I'm glad to tell you this morning that God doesn't work by class. God doesn't work by your financial status or, or who you think you are or, or what you have in the bank. God doesn't work that way. See, they, they were working uh, parallel. They got first, uh, uh, second, and third. They got upper, middle, and lower. But God only has two classes this morning. See, he, He's got the saved class and He's got the lost class. He's got the right class and He's got the wrong class. And that's what it boils down to. And He came, amen, for one reason. And that is the preach of the gospel gospel, Denise, the gospel of Jesus Christ to the poor, amen. Now, I know I know, a lot of us are poor this morning. Uh, we're poor in spirit. Uh, we're poor in attitude. We're poor this morning. Good news this morning. Preaching will help you out of your poor state this morning. Amen. I'm just going to read through this. I'll just hit the highlights and we'll preach when we get over to John. Amen. Listen to what he said he come to do. This is Jesus. How many of you would like to hear him preach live? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. How's he going to do that? Well, he's going to preach to them. Doug, he's going to tell them the gospel. He's going to give them hope. 
He, the words that come out of His mouth is going to take that heart that's broken. That the world, that life, that, that things out here in the elements that they can't control, that just life in general breaks your heart. But preaching, preaching, good, old-fashioned, roll up your sleeves, amen, tighten your belt, put your preaching clothes on, preaching. I'm talking about not backing up, not compromising, backbone like a solo, Miss Reba confronting it head on, telling the truth, preaching will heal the broken hearted. Amen. But we don't have to go to the doctor five days a week to get healed. Amen. From a broken heart. Many of you this morning, you have a broken heart. These broken hearted people sitting in this church this morning, you can come. I saw men of God last night that were dressed nice. I can sit it with a suit and a tie on Doug every Sunday and have a broken heart. I can stand and, and laugh and smile and have a broken heart. I can be in a crowd and be the life of the party and have a broken heart. Amen. And nobody else can't heal it but the preached word of God under the anointing and the spirit and the power of God. It can heal a broken heart. Jesus said, he who hath an ear, let him hear. Every preacher that I talked to said they just don't seem to have the attention of their congregation. Said they just don't seem to be listening. They seem to be distracted. We can have a, the best meeting ever. They can preach their hearts out. Brown, but nothing seems to change. But preaching will bring conviction. Conviction will bring healing for a broken heart. Conviction, amen, it will help your soul. Amen. Boy, we need conviction, don't we? Listen to what the Bible says. To preach deliverance to the captives. Not the captive, but the captives. It'll come get you and it'll lead you out. Amen. Recovering the sight to the blind. Preaching will give you sight. I'm not talking about being blind as not being able to see what's in front of you. I'm talking about your heart not being able to see. The spiritual man that's blind, brown, that, that his flesh gets in the way and he don't really see the truth. I'm going somewhere in just a few minutes. Just hang with me, amen. Preaching will change that. It will give you sight into what's real and what's not. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Preaching. Everybody in here will have a chance to preach. Most of you won't ever stand in a pulpit. But you'll have a chance to preach. You can preach one on one. You can preach out in the world. You can preach when the door opens. You can preach. You preach that stuff under the anointing of God with the power of God. Those things that he ha said would happen, they will happen. You'll see the captive begin to be free. You'll see the broken hearted, amen, begin to mend in their heart. You'll see the blind begin to see, amen. That's God. And the poor will hear the gospel. Preaching. It takes preaching. Amen. And a one on one, I'll never forget. I talked to Ryan yesterday. I said, Do you remember something? And here's what a one on one will do if you listen to the Lord. I'll never forget this. Early in my ministry, I was having the worst time. I was going. I was smiling, Casey. I was acting like everything was all right. I wasn't laying out of church. I come on Wednesdays and I preached. I come on Sundays and I preached. But I was dying inside. I was having a time that was like was no other. The devil was fighting me, Danny, on every hand. Uh, other pr preachers were attacking the ministry. They had a basket out with CDs in it uh, that put out that slandered the name of the church and everything else. And I was wanting to throw in the towel. I was ready to say I quit I'm done there's got to be something else I was ready to quit Ryan was at my house one day and I had a shofar how many of you know what I'm talking about it's a horn the Jewish people used it and they would cry for help with it they would make all their calls Denise a war cry a help cry whatever and you would blow it and I got pretty good I could make that thing rattle the mountains you could hear it forever and Ryan got out on my porch one day and he blowed it, and it went, <laughs> and he blowed it again, and went, <laughs> well, the more he blowed it, all of a sudden, it started making noise, and it rung out. Through the mountain. Help us, God. A few minutes later, it's a 
amazing. Preaching. Preaching. This preacher and his wife come walking to my house. There's a rental property above my house. And he said, God has took me out of the ministry of preaching and he's made me a counselor. And I help pastors. He said, I was outside and I heard that shofar cry help. He said, can I talk to you? I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, God showed me there's a basket that's got cobras coming out. They're coming after your ministry. And my knees went weak. I don't know who this guy was. He said, but God has defamed them. They have no power. They have no poison. He said, can I pray with you? I said, yes. He laid his hands on me. And began to pray and the anointing began to fall. And he began to preach and minister to my family. It's true, isn't it? And he began to prophesy over my life. And he said, God will raise up 12 wells of water and families in your life that will stand by you from day one till the end. And I believe he has and I believe he will. And he began to tell me things, Dan, that I'd never heard another man, that I hadn't even told nobody. And he began to speak life into my ministry and our lives. And he was preaching. So when God shows you somebody needs help, let yourself be willing to go and help them. Had that guy have not come down to my house, Miss Libby, I don't know what would have happened. I don't know where I would have went, but God sent a messenger to my house because He loved me to preach. To preach. And He preached. I'm telling you, those things happened that day when He laid hands on me, scared a Baptist plum to death. Was it right? Oh, honey, it was God. It was all God. All God. Or was it uncomfortable? Uh-uh. What a blessing. God's real. Can I tell you God's real? Amen. Preach. Let me tell you, I'll give you this right here. We'll go home in just a minute. John chapter number 6 is the same as Luke, or as Mark chapter number 6. I've been preaching in Mark chapter number 6 forever. I don't even know if we'll get into the Bible, but just listen. To what the Lord says right here. Please listen. There's. Is and there's going to be. A falling away. From the church. I want to talk to you this morning. Listen to me. There's going to be a falling away. From the church. People are going to quit. People are going to throw in the towel. People are going to be discontented. People are going to murmur. People are going to fall into sin. Pastors will fall out. Deacons will fall out. Members will fall out. Choir people will fall out. It's going to happen. It's happening. It's happening right now. Good people. Giving up and quitting. Listen to me very close this morning. John chapter number 6. Same as Mark chapter number 6. Jesus goes to his hometown. He preaches. He gets rejected. John the Baptist, is. they tell him that he's dead. The, Jesus feeds 5,000 people. Hear me this morning. I don't know that I'll get above this tone right now. Preaching's not presentation anyway. It's not volume. It's the Word of God. It's the anointing. And I want you to take this in, please, this morning. Jesus preaches and feeds 5,000 people. Okay? So if you wonder how people can fall away, listen to me and you'll understand how. Please listen. He feeds 5,000 people. The disciples get on the boat and just in their hearts get hard. They forget about the miracle. From the time, Doug, they got in a boat to the middle of the sea, rowing, they forgot their hearts were hard. 
Jesus said, meet me in Capernaum. Then the whole multitudes flocked to Capernaum. Jesus gets out on the shore on the other side, and he begins to heal everybody that needs it. He went through the town, be healed, be healed, be healed. They were healed. Listen very closely. Then he rolls his sleeves up, and he begins to preach. He begins to tell them that he is the bread of life. He begins to tell them that whosoever eats of that bread shall never hunger or thirst again. Now those people were there because of the miracles. Those people were there because, Denise, they wanted more bread and more fish. Those people were there because they liked the show that they saw. They liked the idea. They were hoping for an earthly king. Jesus began to explain himself to them, and he said, He who hath an ear, let him hear. Then he goes on, and he begins to preach this right here, Jeremy. The writing stays in red for a good while, right there at the end of John chapter number 6. And he begins to say this right here. Whosoever shall eat of my flesh and drink of my blood will have eternal life. So he's already told them they'll never hunger, they'll never thirst, and they'll have eternal life. Pretty good deal, Renee. Pretty good deal. Pretty good offer. And they were so set on what they had thought that their hearts began to harden because they liked everything they saw. But when he began to tell them who he really was and point to the cross, here's where people fall out today. They want to believe in God. They want to pray. They even want to come to church. Some of them want to sing. Some of them want to do this, that, and the other. They want to have a vote in things. And they want all of that until the Lord starts showing them who He really is. When He began to tell them who He really was and what He really was, that's when they begin to reject Him. In His hometown, Denise, they were looking for miracles. But when He began to tell them who He was, they said, no, get out of here. It became offensive. When He began to tell them in Capernaum who He was and what He was there to do, Alan, if they would believe in faith and take that. He wasn't saying being accountable, a cannibal, amen. He was saying like the disciples, you have to drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. Believe in the crucifixion. And their hearts became hard. Please listen this morning. Please listen. Please listen. When he began to explain himself for who he really was and that he was going to be Lord of their lives, they began to be in fear and listen to this. They said it's a hard saying. And after he preached that message, the Bible says this, many of his disciples, Dan, a disciple. That means somebody that followed him, that listened to him preach, that heard his word, that had believed it at least a little bit, turned away that day and walked with him no more. Now, he healed their sick. They saw him take five loaves and two fishes and feed 5,000. They heard him proclaim, but when he told them who he really was, that he was the Son of God, that he come to forgive sins, they said, oh, no. Oh, no. This is a hard saying. Miss Reba, because if you do that, I like the changes you're making, but I'm going to have to change. Oh, no. And from that day on, Denise, his disciples, many of his disciples did not follow him anymore. His disciples left. The people that followed him. The 5,000 were mad. So what do you expect us to do? It grieved Jesus. Though so bad in his spirit. That he looked at his disciples. The twelve men. And he said, will you leave also? It shook him to the very core. Let me tell you something. Jesus is a mind reader. Hear me this morning. And James, when he looked at those men because of all the murmur, he saw in their mind those twelve were thinking about leaving. 
they were doubt they had they had saw everything. They'd saw the pool of Bethesda. They'd saw the, the miracles. But Miss Reba, they were thinking about quitting. The twelve men. He said, Will you leave also? Man, that grieves my heart for Jesus. How does that happen? God help us. Help me. God help us. I don't want to quit. He's too good. I don't want to quit. I, I don't want to throw in the towel. I want to preach. And I want to serve God. I want to love Him. When the trumpet sounds, I want to be like David said, Superman. Amen. They shook him to the core. And old Peter, old big mouth Peter. I like it though. You know, he stood up and he said, Lord, where would we go? You are the Son of God. You are the Christ. Good job, Peter. Amen. And listen, the Lord looked at him. He said, I've chosen you, you twelve, knowing that one of you is the devil. <laughs> so I got figured, if we got 200 here, we got at least 18 to 20 devils. <laughs> Ever service. We may be on the high end of that. Amen. Don't be one of those that gets hard-hearted. Don't be one of those that murmurs and listens to the murmuring. Don't be one of those, you know what would have happened in the day's time? They'd have said, the devil's with us. I am out of here. I can't do it if he's going to be here. I, I can't do it. No, I don't want to be with him. Listen, you come to church because preaching will show the lost man He's a lost man. It'll convict his heart. It'll open his mind. It, it'll reveal things that nothing else will reveal. It'll show him. And see, let me tell you something. I'm going to preach the lost man. Let, me, let, let you and me understand this together. It's just us. I'm planning on rolling my sleeves up here for a little while. If I'm going to stay, I'm going to preach. And I'm going to stay. Amen. I'm going to preach the lost man different than I preach to you. There'll be stuff in every sermon. On Sunday mornings, I'm going to preach to the lost man, and I'm going to love him. If he's drunk the night before, I don't care. If he's got liquor on his breath, I don't care. If he's got dope in his system, I don't care. If he's married and he left his girlfriend's house, I don't care. I'm going to preach to him. I'm going to tell him God loves him. I'm going to tell him about the cross. I don't want to see him get saved. I'm going to preach to him different. Yeah. I'm going to preach to him. i got to preach to him. But then there's you. Then there's you. Hear me. If you're going to come here and you're going to be a Christian. And you're going to be part of this church. I'm going to hold you to a higher standard. You're going to dress right. You're going to walk right. You're going to talk right. You're going to act right. Amen. You're going to fail. And I'm going to help you in love. And I want you to know something as your pastor. When you fail, I will stand by you if it makes us both look stupid. I love you if we both look stupid while we do it. I will stand by you. But, hear me. If you get in my way while I'm preaching to the lost man. If you stand between me and the cross and a sinner, I will run over you. I'll get you out of my way to get to them. As a saved child of God, I expect more out of you and God expects more out of you. If you're a member of this church and your name is on the roll and people know that, you ought to live like it. 
Preach it. Amen. It'll not only reveal to the sinner that it's lost, but it'll reveal to the saved man how to live. The saved man shares conviction. Thank God. Miss Reba, y'all been married for 60 years. The one constant for the last 40 is preaching. Amen. You've had preaching on Wednesday nights. Preaching on Sunday morning. I love sin Reba. Let me brag on them. Amen. They've been faithful since day one that I've been here. They were faithful before I got here. And if I left tomorrow, you'd be faithful after I was gone. Faithful, faithful, faithful. What helps you stay faithful? Preaching, amen. Preaching. Amen. Honey, it takes it. We all need it. But to show the saved man how to live. See, the world, let me give you this and we'll go home. The Bible's full of good examples. And the world will give you, Alan, all kinds of choices, right? Choices. When Tanner was reading this morning, this come to me real strong. Talk about Abraham. Choices. Choices. Why are we the seed of Abraham? Let me tell you. Can I tell you? Preaching. Right here. Because this will preach. Right here is why. Because God told Abraham, Take thine son, thine only son, whom thou lovest. How many of you love your babies? If you got one, y'all love it. Abraham loved him. He loved Isaac. Loved him. Take him upon the mountain and sacrifice him. Choices. Right here's where it gets tough, Woody. Abraham could have said, if he had two choices, he could have said, No, Lord, that's too much. I love Isaac. Isaac's my son. You give him to me. Don't you agree? That's what the crowd would have said. Amen. That's exactly right, Alan. Don't you agree? Isaac's my son, and I love him. And you give him to me, and I think I'll just I'll keep Isaac. I think I'll just, I'll just keep Isaac. Because I love him. Nothing wrong with keeping Isaac, right? He's a gift of God. Why would we lay our Isaac down? Why would we do that? God gave him to us. But through the direction of God and the direction of preaching and the direction of the Holy Ghost, Abraham said, I'll go. See, God told him, he said, I'll make your seed the same as the stars in the sky and the sand of the earth. I'll, I'll, I'll multiply it like that. And God took him up on that mountain. Or Abraham did. He had a choice. But he chose to do what God said. Direction. Preacher to give you direction. And because he did, Doug, because he took him up there and was willing to raise that knife, that ram was caught in the thicket. That's why we are the seed of Abraham. Had Abraham decided to keep Isaac, that's what he would have had. But because of that, and this is what I'm saying, God give him directions. God give him instructions. I believe with all my heart, and I see it happen so many times here at this church. I've doubted my salvation more than I've doubted my call to preach. It's nothing to me, but Matt, I know for a fact, when I sit down at my Bible and I pray, the Holy Ghost of God gives me messages. I do not have a doubt that God's real, I do not have a doubt where they're coming from. I know that. I know it. It's true. I could not do this. Miss Reba, I'm as ADD as they come. In school, in school, I would try my best, Danny, and I would sit there and draw pictures on a piece of paper, and that's as much as I could get done doing my best. I could not answer one question. I couldn't concentrate. I could not focus. I could not do it. I would sit there and draw lines on my paper doing my best. And when I got saved, I would try to pick a verse with one or two words on it, and that's what I would do. But through the help of the Holy Spirit of God, I can open the Bible, and Logos becomes Ramos. The words became life right in front of me. It is amazing what God can do. When God gives a message, and it goes out to the people, He who hath an ear, let him hear. It is for you. It'll change you. It'll direct you. The world will give you another option. They'll stay, say, say, stay down here. Don't worry about it. And you know what? Sometimes the world's options sound pretty good. Amen. But God's will is perfect. You can settle to keep your Isaac at the bottom of the mountain. Or you can listen to the messages even if they're hard. These different things I've preached on in this pulpit and... A lot of you have been like Agrippa. 
<laughs> Who was the guy that Paul stood in front of and uh, and preached? I got it wrote down here. Paul stood in front of him and preached, and he began to shake. Somebody tell me. It's Acts chapter 25. Oh, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he when Paul began to preach to him, he began to shake and tremble. His wife was named was Drusilla. I cannot think of his name, but it, I'm, you can research me out. Read Acts 25, see if it ain't right. Doug, Paul stood in front of him and preached. And he stood and he trembled. And he said, come back at a more convenient time. Come back at a more convenient time. Denise, that's not how it works. When I say stuff that's about your life that you might think I believe I can just hold on to that or I can handle it, if it's from God, you better listen. You better listen. Not Agrippa. Huh? Felix! 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 Yes! It's Felix. Does it not say he stood and trembled? Thank you, Holy Ghost. He stood under the preaching and he trembled. And he said, come back at a more convenient time. Is it Acts 25? Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. 24? Uh, we're still doing good. Let's go. Listen to me. Listen to me. God sends these messages for you. If there's a warning that comes out of this about your computer, your phone, about Facebook, you might all listen to it. Even if you don't like it, even if it's hard. You might all listen to it. You might that 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 cobra that's coming out of the basket for you. God might pull his fangs out that day for you. Amen. If you're here this morning and I'm done, and you've never been saved, and the preaching of the gospel has pulled your heart.